What's up YouTube? Watch how we took this old boring concrete floor that had carpet glue, cracks, just a bunch of nasty stains, and we turned it into a beautiful hardwood floor using our concrete overlay hardwood kits that you can get at Ligari.com. Let's check it out. And then I'll show you, I'll just hit, hit this spot a couple times, get more of this glue up. So you can see, you can be really aggressive. Right, we took all that glue up, but you can see it's starting to gum up. I mean, it's really thick right here, really, really thick. So these will take a little bit longer. So just keep that in mind if you're bidding jobs or if this is your, your project that, all right, we got carpet glue, that's gonna take longer to get up, a couple more passes. And then same thing with sealer, if there's a lot of sealer on it, same thing. But again, that Dyma brush, get the majority of the glue off and the shot blaster should cut through it pretty good. So yeah, we'll have Trey just shot blast this whole floor. We'll show you guys the process from start to finish on this. Shot blast and just wall to wall. You can go forward, backwards. It should be, it should pick up most of the beads when you go forward, but this thing seems like it's picking up most of the beads going backwards. So rental machines, they can be a toss up sometimes, but this guy works really good. Some belt rentals. Um, and so yeah, he'll just do passes until we get the floor you know, profile where we can see all the, the aggregate in the concrete and the majority of this glue taken off of the floor. Okay, so the next step um, is to auto scrub, clean this floor, get as clean as we can. Um, that way our, our coating, whatever we're putting on this, whether it's epoxy or concrete overlay is gonna uh, permanently bond to that concrete surface. It's gonna allow it to soak in and basically weld to the concrete surface. So we shot blasted, um, we showed you guys all that. We cleaned out all these cracks, these, these saw cuts, they're not cracks. We cleaned out all the saw cuts because again, we wanna honor those because we're doing 
concrete overlay on here. If we were doing epoxy, we could have filled those right to make a seamless floor. Concrete overlays do not bridge expansion joints as well. They usually crack back again. So we want to honor those. That way there's some free play and there's no chance of the, the edges kind of popping and chipping out. But I will show you, like for instance, we have a lot of chips and stuff missing, missing out of the, shot, uh, the saw cuts. If you guys want to fill those, right, and get a nice clean um, saw cut line, the only way to do that is to do our patcher like we did here, our crack repair. And then re-saw cut it. You can see how it filled in all the chips and everything, right, and give us a nice clean, perfectly squared up edge. Just looks beautiful compared to all the chips, right? So that is really the only way to clean that up. Now we're gonna be coating over this and then re-saw cutting after we coat it because when we coat it, it's gonna fill it up a little bit and then we're gonna saw cut it out. So maybe just let customers know, hey, if you wanna clean these up, get them nice and square like they were freshly cut, it's gonna obviously cost more because you have to do a lot more work to do that. The other option is just coat it, let the overlay fill it in, saw cut it out. It's not gonna be as crisp as it would be if you pre-filled it, then saw cut it, um, like I just showed you. But again, if they wanna pay for it, they wanna pay for it. So that is the option. So for auto scrubbing, any, any auto scrubber, you can get these rental places. Um, most rental places, uh, this one's from Sunbelt, but you can get them, most rental shops will, will rent these out and Sunbelt's nationwide. And then we're using black stripper pads, they're very aggressive. And, and so we get a good solid pressure on it. I like to double up the pads so it adds a lot more pressure onto the floor as it's scrubbing. And so we're gonna put these two pads on here. And what this machine does is it puts water out, scrubs the floor with those scrubbers and squeegees up the remaining water. So for this particular project, we're trying to remove the, the remaining carpet glue up. So it'll take a couple passes. Once the water gets kind of soaked into that carpet glue, it really softens it up and starts to strip it off. But I'll show you, I'm sure this pad's got, so it's got quite a bit of that carpet glue on it. And so it'll take just a couple passes. So this whole section kind of right here, there's really no carpet glue left. Um, and so that's kind of what we're looking for when we clean the floor. And it's always, even if you're just shot blast fresh concrete or something, I always like to do two passes, right? First pass kind of gets the majority of it up and then that second pass really gets it nice and clean. So I'll hit, I'll, I'll hit a room twice, uh, once and then I'll probably clean out the machine, refill it with water, hit it one more time and then we're ready to go. But that's it guys, auto scrubber simple. And then we just take a mop, we hit all our edges so we get as close to the edge as we can with the auto scrubber mop clean bucket of water and we hit all the edges um, and that's basically how we prep and clean floors now this was a pretty nasty floor as far as prep wise because again we had the sealer on it we had carpet glue we had a bunch of um, old like i think it was like a grout they used grout to fill in the, the saw cuts we wanted to clean all that out now we have a nice fresh canvas um, and then again once we're done we'll saw cut these joints out that way when the slab moves um, expands and contracts, it's not gonna hit our coating and start chipping stuff out. So we'll have Trey finish up auto scrubbing. Um, and again, we're trying to get it like this surface right here where we don't really see carpet glue versus out over here, we see a bunch of carpet glue, right? Bunch of carpet glue spots. So we're looking for this right here. All right, I'm gonna go over mixing our Ligari stain. Um, this is a five gallon kit. So basically I have all the supplies we'll need to mix and apply it. Um, we're gonna definitely want a mask because we're gonna be mixing isopropyl in the stain so it is gonna have a smell. Some gloves, so I got my mask, my gloves, flathead screwdriver to pop the stain cap off, razor blade to, 
to cut the strip that you pop off of the five gallon bucket, which I already did, so, you, so I won't be showing that. Drill, mixing paddle, a sprayer to spray, and we like the Ace Hardware sprayers. They're cheap and they always spray a nice fine mist, mist, and then a strainer to dump the stain into the sprayer. We always like to strain stuff, that way we don't deal with it getting clogged, stuff like that. We have our isopropyl 90, 99%. You wanna just use 91% or higher. And then obviously a container to measure out two gallons because we're gonna add two gallons of isopropyl to the stain. And then obviously whatever stain color you're choosing, we're going with black. Um, and then I'm gonna go over how to, how to mix this stuff up. So I'll put my gloves on just in case we get it on my hands. And obviously if you guys are trying to just stain a floor, don't mix your stain on the floor, do it outside on some plastic cardboard in the grass, something like that. But we're gonna stain this floor and then overlay it so it doesn't really matter. So when you guys open your stain base, there's only gonna be three gallons of stain base in there. So don't worry if it's not full, that's how it's supposed to be because we're gonna add two gallons. So I'll just give this a quick mix. And then we're gonna, what I like to do is dump some of this isopropyl into this stain container and shake it up after I dump it out. So I'm gonna get a gallon in here. Flip this guy around so it's not splashing. Okay, there's our gallon. So there's one gallon, I'm gonna pour a little in here. And we're gonna shake up the black stain. Flathead screwdriver, pop it open. All right, so we're gonna dump the Ligari stain in. It's a little thick. Black's a lot thicker than other colors. So we'll get the majority out. And then I'm gonna dump some of the ISO, isopropyl in there. Put the cap on, shake it in here because it will come out. So if you're making multiple batches of stains, you wanna do it all the same way. So if I was gonna make another five gallon bucket, I would wanna do the exact same way. I'd wanna dump a little isopropyl in the, the, the stain container, shake it up. So do it the same way you're doing it um, on the first batch. So we'll add the rest of this gallon. And then I like to stir it up a little bit before we add the other gallon. And then we'll just mix it again on low speed. So that's how you mix um, our Ligari stain five gallon batches. And then like I said before, if you're mixing multiple batches, mix all the color packs in the exact same way but this is ready to go we're going to spray it out of a pump up sprayer i'm going to wear a mask um, and obviously we have the walls plasticed off and anything that we don't want to get over spray on plasticed off so when i'm dumping in the strainer we always want to or when i'm dumping in the sprayer we always want to strain it and obviously dumping out of a full five gallon bucket's kind of a pain so i'm going to pour out of this guy Before I start spraying, I'm gonna obviously test spray the tip, right? We wanna find mist. Just like that. So now we're ready to go, start 
staining. So I'll put my mask on um, and then I'll show you guys how to stain. Okay, so you guys saw mixing. So now we're ready to stain. Um, a few things I want to go over is obviously this floor was shot blasted. So the stain's going to really soak in, right? We have really porous surfaces. We got rid of that cream layer. So you have to make sure you shot blast, get past that cream layer, or this process won't work with the staining because what we're trying to do is make the floor black. That way when we put our tape lines for the grout lines for the wood grain, we have black grout lines without having to do a full coat of overlay in black. So it saves a lot of time, it's fast, the stain dries quick. We tested a few spots to make sure this would work. It will pull up a little bit of the stain just, just because it's pulling up some of the, the um, loose micro aggregate that's in the cement, um, but it still looks black. So that's what we're doing. We're staining this black to create black grout lines in the overlay. But again, make sure you're shot blasting, getting past that cream smooth layer of, of concrete surface. That way the stain can really penetrate. Um, and then that's, that's kind of how we create the black grout lines um, versus having to coat the whole floor with black overlay. Um, saves a lot of time. So I'm basically just gonna make this floor black. I don't really wanna do a lot of puddles you know, maybe two coats. Um, again, we just don't want a bunch of puddling. We want it to kind of lightly soak into the floor. So I know, I know I'm getting low on stain, so I'm not gonna pump it again even though it needs it. Try to get the pressure out. Um, and you guys can kind of see the process, right? Hit my walls down a little bit, and then I just go back and forth. But you can see we have a good even coat. We don't have a lot of like puddles just sitting there. It's just slowly soaking in. So this is exactly what we're trying to do. And then once it all dries, if we have any light spots, we'll just come back and spot hit those areas. All right, so we're gonna add some more stain. Um, these have a valve on them, so you can't release the pressure. Just make sure you're straining it every time we add stain, and we won't have to worry about clogging up the sprayer. So the next step in this process is taping off our wood plank pattern design, right? You guys can do any design you want. We're just gonna do standard wood planks all the way down this floor, and then we'll break those up randomly. Um, so the stain dries, takes about, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes. It has the isopropyl, so it's gonna evaporate quick. And if you guys can get some airflow on it, it'll obviously dry out faster. Um, and we use two and a half gallons of stain in this room, right? This whole room is about 1,650 square feet. So you can kind of go off of that, how much stain you guys would need for, for the projects that you're doing. So for doing our tape lines, we're gonna need our filament tape, which you can get on our single item store. We have our filament tape here. That's gonna create the, the patterns. And then we, we're gonna need a pencil, uh, a razor blade, because you can't tear this tape. You have to cut it, tape measure. And then last thing we're gonna be using is a speed square to do our uh, 
uh, cuts in the plank a lot faster and we'll go over that when we get to that point. So what we want to do first is obviously figure out your design, right? What kind of design you want. We're going to do just standard long planks. We're going to go from wall to wall and then we're going to um, do a bunch of shorter planks all throughout this using that speed square. So make it look like a standard hardwood flooring. Um, be really cool. Now a lot of options as far as how you guys want to lay out your floors. You could do tiles, diamond patterns, there's just endless, endless options on that, but we're going to stick to the standard wood grain. Um, so what we're going to do first, make our marks on both ends of the walls, and then we're going to stretch the filament tape all the way down. We're going to get our long wood plank patterns done first, and then once those are all laid out, we'll come through and show you how to do um, the shorter planks, kind of break up all the planks randomly throughout the floor. So we're going to be doing 10 inch planks. So I just need to make a mark every 10 inches. Obviously that's very easy if you guys are doing like a seven inch, five inch, right? Some, some numbers can be a little more tricky as you start going down. So I'm going to go around every 10 inches. So we'll go 10, 20, 30, obviously 40. So we got our marks on each end of the wall. We're gonna stretch this out. Tim's gonna put his end down. And we're taping on this side, my side of the mark. We don't wanna cover the mark because we wanna be able to coat it and not see it. So I'm gonna stretch it tight. He's holding his end down. And I'm gonna just go right down to the mark. And then when you get to your edge, you wanna make sure you go up the wall that way we know where these marks are at. If I cut it down here after we're coating, we're not gonna know where the tape's at. So same thing with Tim, he's going up the wall as well. That way we know exactly where all the lines are when we go to pull them. So I'm waiting for him to get his, his end set. So he's, he's got his down on the ground. I'm gonna pull tension on it and then go straight down to my, my mark. And you'll notice when I go down, I'm making sure I'm hitting the wall. So I don't have to come back and try to piece in and make it straight. So we're about done taping the planks, right? Um, I just kind of go over a few things. Once you guys get started, don't overthink it, right? The more random you go, the cooler it looks. Um, so once you get started, I'll kind of just show you. I'm on this line right now, okay? So basically what I do is I just go in the middle, right? Or above the previous plank, okay? So when I'm marking out stuff, once you get a couple done, it goes real quick. So I got a couple here, so I think I'll leave a long one here. I'll maybe start my next one right here. And then come down, got a long plank here. So we're gonna put one right here. And 
then come down again. Another opening here. Got another long plank, want to split that up. And so once you get your previous planks done, it goes real quick. You really don't have to think. And I'm kind of looking down the line, just making sure I don't line up with one, a couple planks over, right? So I don't want to put one right here. I'll put it over just a little bit. Quickly look at that before I mark them. And then we got a plank right here, obviously. So this can be its own plank. And then we just start again. So now I can put one maybe right here because we don't have nothing here. Put a plank here. Come over to another big opening. Do a long one right here. Same thing, another opening. So since it's such a big room, we're doing some pretty long planks which is gonna look cool. And then periodically we'll throw in a little bit shorter of a plank. And then obviously guys are going behind me and just taping on that line. And then when we're all done, there's a couple spots that we usually will kind of adjust, like right over here. And kind of see, we got three hashes kind of stair-stepping. So we're gonna probably move this guy just a little bit somewhere. And we kind of just look through the room and make sure we don't want to tweak anything. Um, so don't overthink it when you guys are starting out. Just kind of get it started and then go in between them all like I just showed you. And then you can come back and adjust a few planks here and there as needed. So we'll finish this up. We'll adjust this guy for sure and maybe a few others. It looks pretty good though. Um, and then we'll show you the next steps. I'm gonna go over uh, the process of mixing your batches of overlay um, and the tools we're gonna need. So I'll just start with the tools. We have a 32 gallon uh, brute force trash can. We like to mix in those. They have a relatively flat bottom and that's just how we've always done it. They work great. You're gonna need a, a drill, a mortar mixer paddle. Um, and we like to use a corded high power drill just so we're not draining batteries, right? You're never gonna mix this stuff good with just a battery powered drill. So you get a good drill mortar mixer and then even though we're outside we're going to use a vacuum to to suck up a lot of the dust that it creates from mixing and then the guys that are going to mix are also going to be wearing masks just just to prevent any of that uh, concrete dust getting in their lungs so very very vital that you guys do that and we are outside so we're going to be picking up some noise some construction going on in the back and then we have a bunch of buckets right here because we're going to mix in this and then we're going to transfer from here into buckets where we can easily manage those and dump them out on the floor. And then we have obviously the product here. So we have our polymers right here and then all of our bags. So we're gonna be mixing this, this full kit up. This is a 1,750 square foot floor kit for a wood grain floor kit. And the polymers are already come with the liquid modifier to give you extended working time. So don't worry about adding that, it's already in there. We're just gonna pre-mix these. And what I like to do is take the lid off dump half of the polymer in the brute force 32 gallon mixing bucket we're gonna use. And then I'll mix the remainder amount, right, in the five gallon bucket, because some of the polymers will settle. So what the process is, we're gonna mix four bags. So we're gonna need two five gallon buckets of polymer because two bags go to one five gallon bucket of polymer. We'll be able to mix four bags in here. And then like I said, we'll transfer into five gallon buckets and take them inside and dump them out. But it's real simple. I'm gonna just go over adding the, the polymer. So we'll pop the, pop the lid off. And then I'm gonna dump half in. Maybe a little more than half. And then we always wanna mix that up so we get all of the polymer that might have settled at the bottom mixed in. And then we can clean that bucket out with the hose um, and we can use this as a transfer bucket as well. So I'll have Justin clean that out, the hose. So again, we're making, if you guys are just doing two bags at a time, you would just do one five gallon bucket of polymer and then you would add your two bags and mix that up. 
But like I said, we're gonna do two. So I'm gonna throw another uh, bucket in. And then we're just have to add the four bags. A little bit of polymer on the edges, but that's all right. So we'll clean that one out as well. And so now we're ready for our bags. And opening your bags, obviously you can use a razor knife, but it's really simple if you just grab the corners. So I'll grab down here, I'll pinch it, and then I'll just tear it, and then it'll just pull right off. And then now I can dump that in. So that's usually how I open the bags. And, and notice we have a tarp down because it will get a little messy. But so now I'll have the guys jump in here, mix this up, add the, add the four bags that's needed, um, and then we'll go and show you how to install it. So when we're adding the bags, we don't wanna just dump big old clumps in because it can go all the way to the bottom and kind of stick. So we wanna dump it in slowly. Um, and then the guy that's mixing, he wants to thoroughly mix um, really fast as that's being dumped in. as you get towards the end of the room, don't pour out such large beads. So the guy who's pouring out the beads needs to start pouring out smaller beads and doing it more often. So we're not, we're not left with a massive amount of overlay that we have to kind of scoop up in a, you know, with a dustpan. What we're gonna do now, as you can see, we're getting to the edge of the room and there's not a door here or on the other side of the room, it's actually in the middle of the room. So uh, now what we'll do is me or Alex will put cleats on and we'll just keep doing the same thing we have been doing with the squeegee. Tyler's already on, on, on spikes, but now the squeegee guy is gonna be on spikes because we'll have to probably walk on the material to get out of the room. So 
So since we're getting down to the end, like Tim said, Justin's kind of fine tuning the edges. So I'm kind of just slowing down as I do each pass. That way I don't catch up to him, right? So I'll wait a second, then I'll run another pass. Maybe wait, a, wait 10, 15, 20 seconds, run another pass. That way he can get everything dialed in and um, we're kind of keeping up with the pace. So the next step after the, the texture coat that we did, the wood grain in, we're gonna stain it to, to really highlight that wood grain texture. Um, this texture coat, when we did the wood grain, that can take about anywhere from two to maybe four hours, depending on the temperature in the room. Um, so obviously colder, it's gonna take a little longer to, to dry, right? But we wanna make sure it's dry before we stain it again. And even in like saw cuts and expansion joints, we wanna make sure those are dried out. But staining is real simple. It's basically the same way we did um, the black for the base coat. And you'll notice we had to have some of that black color kind of come, the black stain come up through the white. And it does it kind of randomly all throughout. So it gives it a really cool look anyways. So don't, don't worry if you guys see that. That's always going to happen when you're staining first because there's still some stain residue on the surface. And we're kind of moving that product over that surface. It's going to pull some of that up. We're gonna be doing light gray stain. You're gonna mix this the same way we did the black, right? You're gonna have your color pack. And if you guys are doing different colors, obviously you're gonna have a different color stain. I'm gonna throw my mask on, stain the exact same way. Um, and this goes really, really quick. And then we'll let this dry. And then we're gonna sand it and pull the tape and then put the sealer on. Now that the stain's dry, um, we wanna sand the surface. And what that does is it brings out all the white high points, right? It sands down the stain on the, all the high points where that wood grain texture is and makes it white. So now we have this two-tone and it really makes the wood grain texture actually pop and you're really, you can really see it um, a lot more. So what I like to do, floor sander, 80 grit sanding screens, and then I'll do a section and then I'll flip the cord around behind me and I'll just push the machine forward. That way I'm not moving the cord all the time. When I'm running this thing, I'll just, you'll see, I'll have it like on my hip and it's kind of just on my hip and I'm just moving along back and forth. And this is, this is what it looks like. So let's plug the cord in over here now. Another thing, if you guys sometimes will have high spots in the concrete um, and you'll sand a lot off, you can come back and stain that area and maybe palm sand it to feather it in. So don't worry if you sand through like a high spot too much, or maybe you had the sander on that area too much, you can always come back and fine tune um, by just restaining that area and blending it in, into the rest of the floor.
So that's the process, guys. Hit your wall edges, and then I like to just keep a nice straight line. That way I'm not doing a spot and, and you know, kind of all random. You're gonna wind up missing a few areas. Um, and then obviously we'll replace the pads periodically, right, get fresh pads. And when you guys are starting with a fresh pad, you, you wanna move it really quick because it's gonna be pretty aggressive. So once I hit that go button, I try to move it real quick to kind of get it moving, not just dig in in one spot. So we'll finish sanding this and then we'll vacuum it up. And then I always like to pull a piece of tape and just see how it's gonna look. That's, that's the fun, funnest part is when you start to pull your tape lines. So we'll pull this guy. So yeah, so what we're gonna do, finish sanding, vacuum, and then the next step is obviously pull the tape, and then we're gonna be able to see all of those um, um, wood plank patterns. It's gonna be really cool. Okay guys, before we start saw cutting, what we did yesterday, we obviously pulled all the tape, right? Cleaned the floor off. Um, and then we went around with a, a black, um, we like Sharpies Expo. These little dry erasers work as well because they soak into the overlay. We went around and hit the bleed mark. So we left the bleed mark to show you guys right here. There wasn't even that many, but all we do, which is nice having black grout lines because they're easy to touch up. So we have this bleed mark. I'll just run this right down that edge and it'll clean up that that bleed mark and so you can touch up 
obviously any bleed marks that you have are the white. And you'll notice them more obviously when you're this close to the floor, but we stand back and then you won't even be able to tell. So that's how we kind of fine tune any bleed marks. And then the last thing we want to do, we always want to re-saw cut for the overlays because they don't bridge cracks as well. They'll crack and what happens when the slab is moving and hitting each other, right? They move a little bit. The product that's filled in there will kind of flex and start to chip out and you run the risk of like chipping an edge out or a chunk out because this whole saw cut is filled. Well, we come back and open that up and now we have a gap where the slab can, um, can move without hitting, hitting the product inside there. So what we have to saw cut, um, obviously we have a big one. These, are, these can be a little sketchy, um, but once you get them in the crack that they're really nice, you just need to, need to know how to work with those. And then we also have a smaller one. So you guys can use the bigger one if you have a lot to do, right? Or you can use a walk behind saw, a few options, but we like to use the angle grinder. You can get these in 12 inch as well, but it just goes a lot faster the bigger one you get. And then obviously the four inch one, will take a lot longer because it doesn't, doesn't cut as fast. So we'll just kind of go over showing you how to do that. We're just gonna run this guy, vacuum behind it. It'll create a little bit of dust, so we'll wear a mask. Obviously safety goggles, some um, ear protection because it does get loud. So yeah, we'll clean these up, get all them saw cut, and then clean the floor up, and then we'll, we'll go over um, applying the top coat. All right guys, we're at that process of doing the top coat. We're gonna be doing our gloss urethane on this. I'll go over the supplies needed, stuff to mix, stuff to apply it, um, and then I'll show you how to mix it. It's really simple. So we're gonna be using, since it's a big floor, 18 inch roller pad, 3 8 nap is the size of the pad. It's already been de-shedded. And then we have a nine inch roller pad right here. That is for hitting our edges against the wall. And then we have an 18 inch roller tray and then we put garbage bags over it. That way we don't have to clean it out. We just pull the garbage bag out, throw it away. So we got a, we got a five gallon bucket, empty bucket. We have the water, because we got to add 10% of water. And since we're making two kits, um, we have the, the right amount of water. Um, and it should say on here, uh, 13 ounces. So we should have about 26 ounces of water here, which looks about like that. that's what we got. And so for mixing, I'm just going to be mixing with the drill and the five gallon bucket. And then if you're, if you're mixing gloss or matte, they're, they're mixed the same exact way, so it doesn't matter. So when we're applying the top coat, typically we want to kind of roll with the grain, right? Because maybe you get a roller line or something, it's going to be less noticeable if you're going with the flow of the grain versus if we were going this way, a sideways 
roller line, right? Typically, you don't have any issues with roller lines in overlays because they soak it in a lot. So we do two coats of the urethane. Reason being is our first coat really soaks into the overlay and kind of seals it up. And then that second coat won't soak in as much, so it kind of sits on the surface. Um, and that's what we want. So we always do two coats. So what we'll do is we'll do first coat today. Tomorrow we'll come back, do our second coat. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm, we're just gonna work from wall to wall. So I'm gonna start here in the middle, go up a little bit, and then come back down. You can see how once, wherever I start, it puts the majority of product. That's why I don't wanna start right here and then try to stretch all that way down there. So always start in the middle, and then we're just rolling it out. Very simple guys, so all, all I'm doing is just trying to go the same width. So every, every time I re-dip my roller, I'm getting about from that, basically that saw cut to about here. And so I kind of know how far to stretch it. 